workers. But this time today was important for us to actually delve into a very, you know, touchy yet sensitive yet important topic we all struggle with. And just earlier today, we were having this interesting debate between imposter and saboteur and where in between are we, are we anywhere? Is it already really happening to us, not happening to us? And I think one of the juggle that goes on in our mind is about, can I be a speaker? Do I have the profile to be one? How do I make a good speaker? Will people judge me? What do I need to do to get there? And so many such questions, you know, which at least I ask myself every day. And I feel I do a pretty decent job talking. Um, and I've done comparing since I was 12. But I still feel I can't do it if I have to go and give a speech like a Ron Kaufman or a Simon Sinek. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? So hence we thought, uh, you know, for all those thoughts and more, we would like to invite a gentleman who is, or a guest tonight, who is, uh, has done this and has, you know, literally overcome all of those thoughts that I and many more of us have here and broken that barrier and gone and made a, a and has a journey of, of a speaker. Um, so welcome, Sandeep. And uh, a quick introduction. Um, Sandeep is a founder of this amazing company called Unilism, Inner Power, Energy, and Mindfulness Coach, alongside of that. He's an IIT IM alumnus, and he ran a successful strategy consulting company and did a lot of training over a period of time before heading to the Himalayas. Um, and he was looking for purpose and life and all those questions that remain unanswered for us. I think Sandeep somehow seems to have found those answers. Um, and then he uses this very strong inner power strategy. Um, and he's obviously traveled to you know in multiple continents, more than 40 countries. Um, or oh, sorry, cities. Um, he's a Reiki master. He's a business, um, a key gong guide, mindfulness coach, author of four books. I'm getting tired, Sandeep. That's a lot to speak about. So I'm going to just simply hand over this entire uh, conversation to you by asking you, Sandeep, take us through this one amazing journey that you've had as a speaker. <laughs> Thank you, Anjani, and welcome everybody. It's so nice to see familiar faces also. I see a lot of familiar names. I think a lot of us are connected on LinkedIn already, but uh, good to see people who have actually interacted with uh, me before, or I have interacted with earlier. Yeah. Great, great, all of you. And uh, so, well, uh, let, let's, let's just cut all the crap and get straight to what's going to be helpful to you guys. I really appreciate that you guys have made this time. Good 30 of you on this call right now and uh, the numbers are increasing. I, I'm a host. I can see the admit uh, button on there. And I really appreciate that all of you are, most of you at least, are keeping the cameras open. That's one of the pain points we all have as trainers and coaches. No, Don't know whether the message is getting across or not. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And I assure you, that this conversation, the next one and a half hours or so, uh, will be something that you can apply in the next week, in the next month, in the next few years, and all your lives. And um, uh, rest assured that uh, just as Shimantran, I too am available to you um, for, for questions, clarifications, just bouncing off things even later in the future. That said, um, I think the, the core question that uh, Anjani has put forth, uh, I can reduce to one word, why? Why, I mean, you were running this successful strategy com consulting company. You, you had these academic credentials. You suddenly went to the Himalayas, oh, why for God's sake? And why thereafter? And that is, in fact, the best place to start, you know, like she mentioned Simon Sinek, starting with why. It's a great place to start. It's a great place to really clear your mind about anything. So the most important thing in profiling yourself to be a speaker, what you're talking about today, hey, incidentally, little off track diversion. This is a momentous day, especially in the context of professional speaking. Because this is the world's first professional speakers celebration day. So just this year, 
as the global speaking federation, uh, which is uh, based in 17 countries across the world and has a chapter in India called the PSAI, the Professional Speakers Association of India, of which I'm on the executive board. Just this year, across the GSF, the 17 countries, we decided that we we're going to dedicate one day, which I call the Valentine's Day. If you love speaking, it's not 14th Feb, it's 14th March, which is the Valentine's Day of professional speakers. So here you are, all aspiring professional speakers, some of you speaking, of course, but you know, the difference between a speaker and a professional speaker is the money aspect. So we get paid to speak. And just to take you aside on a, on a, on a story, which takes us back many, many years. I'm not gonna reveal my age because I was a teenager then, but rest assured, many, many years. Uh, one of my aunts, my mom's friend, I was, I was always an introvert. So I, I would never, in, in fact, I still have, I wouldn't speak much. I wouldn't uh, express myself too much. And that that's something I can say in the comfort of 35 women here, 34, <laughs> you know, but uh, so, so you just know the man side of things, you know, we don't express ourselves. And so this auntie said to my mom, uh, and I can say this in Hindi because uh, you all understand, I trust, okay. Uh, uh, whatever he has to say. I'm not so good in Hindi, by the way. <laughs> but I just try to recall what exactly she said. But she says, his, his words are gold. He uses them very little. <laughs> and somewhere, you know, as, as we all know, coaches, uh, trainers, all of us, somewhere that, that clicked in my mind, in my subconscious. Ki, yeah, this is a good thing. And so, when the idea of speaking for money came about, then uh, it automatically attracted me from somewhere deep within. And uh, so I just uh, took that side story, but the real journey had no speaking uh, built in. I uh, did speak uh, because I became the president of Rotary at 35 and that was um, uh, a position which, which really, puts you on stage and even before that you, you are on stage quite a bit and it it felt good and then I uh, was exposed to uh, network marketing which also exposes you to various stages and that felt even better because it's a very positive environment and you know people are always clapping and happy and stuff like that and that's when I started thinking okay as a consultant a strategy consultant to Large companies, am I part of the problem or part of the solution? Because it appeared to me that corporate companies today, or in, in fact, 15 years ago, 17 years ago to be precise, when I started thinking this around 2005, they seem to be creating more problems for the world than uh, they solve it. I was consulting to BPO companies. I was in Hyderabad, as I was just saying, uh, uh, a little earlier. So uh, in, in the early days of BPO, when we were teaching our kids, uh, not I mean, the 20 year olds today also, BPO still gives good jobs and they are working against the biorhythm. They're working against the clock. And that seemed to me, uh, commonsensically, not a right thing to do. It's uh, against nature. And then I was uh, also consulting to consumer brands, large companies, selling packets, and eating out of packets seemed so wrong. And here we were promoting that as convenient food and for the go-getters and stuff like that. And that disturbed me. And that disturbance is what took me towards answers through spirituality, through understanding, like uh, Anjani said, why, why do we do what we do? What is the consciousness we're creating? What is the consciousness we're operating out of as we design our lives and futures? And some of you might have similar questions. And that then took me through uh, Vedic gurus and then Tibetan lamas and then Taoist monks and Zen masters and all of that. And then I spent six years in villages across India, away from the disturbing corporate world and working on what I call inner power, working on uh, developing oneself in alignment of mind, body, and spirit. And I started 
conducting workshops. In fact, right now I'm uh, three hours out of Madrid and this is a workshop area. And uh, ever since 2016, my wife and I have designed a lifestyle that is um, completely geographically independent. Why? Because we had this dream of being able to outreach a lot of people. And in 2019, I met an acquaintance uh, who I knew for many years. We hadn't met, we met at a conference. And he said, uh, what are you doing? And we caught up, you know? And I was probably in the same position as many of you, trainer, coach, working with energy, teaching people how to um, develop their energies, how to, how to heal and all that sort of stuff. And he asked me a couple of things, which I'm gonna ask you. And I request participation in the chat box, all right? Let's, let's be honest, we, we are all in the same uh, boat. He asked me, and I'm asking you, about how many people on average do you uh, have at any of your sessions or workshops? So how many people, could we have some numbers uh, in the chat box, please? Average, how many people do you have in your workshops and your training sessions? Yeah, each workshop, 100, 10, 15, right? 25, 40, right? Right, yep. Absolutely, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everybody for your generous participation here. And that's, that's pretty much my number two. And then he said, uh, about how much, how many hours do you spend in each workshop? each training session, and I'm asking you this, but how many hours do you spend for each workshop training session? What depends, yes, two hours, yeah, two and a half hours, two hours, two hours, right, right, six, seven, yeah, that, that was closer to my number because, you know, we do day-long workshops and stuff like that, but yeah, so anything between a half day to a day or sometimes even over three days, but that's rare. So pretty much, you know, we're in the same ballpark. So let's take four hours over there and let's take 40 people as an average. And he didn't say this, but I'm saying this to you, but he said something similar. How would you like to expand that 40 to 400 or 4,000? Let's just take 400 for the moment, 10 times outreach and compress those four hours into 40 minutes. In fact, in my case, it was like 10 hours because some of these workshops are over three days. So 10 hours into one hour, one tenth, and get paid 10 times what you currently paid for those 10 hours. I said, you gotta be joking. That's 10 into 10 into 10, a thousand times. You got me hooked. And that, in 2019, was the seed of professional speaking. That's the day I joined the Professional Speakers Association of India and got exposed to people who are earning $10,000 an hour. And you're worth it. You are absolutely worth $10,000 an hour. Absolutely. Because of everything that you've put in, for the last 10 years, 15 years, some of you, three years, five years, whatever. The depth of your knowledge, the depth of your experience is worth a hell of a lot. And it's valued a hell of a lot. But you haven't profiled yourself for it. So that's the start of why profiling is important and why it was important to me to really investigate this area and that was, that was my journey, which then, just to conclude the story and bring it to uh, the current time and age. In 2019, I also wrote my second book, which is called Renewal, which was about the renewal of human consciousness, which completes the, the story from 15 years before, where renewal is all about how our own habits can change our consciousness 
And because like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world, because each one of us has that delta change, the whole world changes and we raise human consciousness collectively. So that's then uh, through the through the COVID uh, period become a movement or is becoming, I wouldn't become far from that. But that gave me purpose as a professional speaker to then what I couldn't do, even with these open workshops that I was doing and Prita was part of one of them, where we work with energy, we do things, but you know, we're reaching just five people, 10 people, 40 people, 100 people. Here we're reaching thousands and we're reaching them with messages of renewal. And that, that integrated things for me and built the kind of uh, why that takes me in mission mode for this decade. So that's where we are. We, I'm the founder of the Renewalism Movement and this is what brought me here and this is why it's important. So um, not to take up more time on this because I'm sure Anjani has a lot of things planned, but uh, if we have time, we might Anjani take somebody on the mat and help them discover their why or we could do that through a, a, a session later sometime or um, plan it on a one-to-one -one basis, something like that. But it, um, would be, it would be good to discuss why before anything else. And I, I, you... I agree with you. Tell me how much time will it take for you to discuss the why? Can we do it like in about five, seven minutes because we don't want to overrun? Let's mm -hmm. come back to it at the end maybe if uh, yeah. necessary because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a personal journey. And in fact, like I said, you, you're welcome to connect with me one-to-one. -one. Um, I'm available at sandeepnath.com. Uh, dot uh, com so slash AMA. Ask me anything AMA. So just hop across to AMA. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, but you talk. know, Sandeep, I'm going to share that in a minute uh, in the chat. Thank you for sharing this amazing journey. I can't, I almost had, um, you know, goosebumps when you said, uh, the, when you used a 10 by 10 by 10 formula. Uh, and I really thought that was such an impactful, um, you know, a trigger to say, I want to you know, grow it by 10 times, spend one tenth of the time doing it and make 10 times more money. And I think that's just so impactful that itself is a purpose, uh, by, you know, in its own whole. Also, I like the sentence you use by saying our own habits can change our consciousness. And I think we need, we have to dig deeper in it going forward. But I want to really move quickly from the why you be decided to become a speaker to the important pertinent question of today evening what do we do what do <laughs> we do again. really we're all struggling with that <laughs> one <more. laughs> true true very true <laughs> great question there and i'm sure a lot of you have it in your minds okay everybody paints these roses and stuff like that but i have uh, i have a few uh, pointers for you here and uh, I think we're going to put them as three C's. Right, Alpa. So let's make it four C's because we've already done with one C, getting clarity. You see for clarity. Once you get clarity, if you don't have clarity, please don't spend the next one hour over here. Please find the clarity and listen to the recording. That is good homework, you know, so, or go one on one and that. find that. <clears throat> so, Sandeep, what yeah. do you mean by clarity? Is it whether you want to speak or not or the topic you want to speak on? Why do you want to speak? Okay, fair. So that clarity is there. So when, when you know, uh, like you said, uh, Sureka, the topic, that is where uh, the first thing comes in about the what. And it came for me. It comes for everybody. Who, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of people who are aspiring speakers in the PSAI. And uh, we often do these uh, workshops internally also to help people understand that you're doing coaching, you're doing training, you're probably doing multiple other things and suddenly speaking. So uh, what, do I, what do I project myself as? I mean, like you said, the topic of the day, Anjani, is about profiling. What do I profile myself as? What do I say? And when you have clarity on why I'm doing it, then that uh, that that starts becoming a process of uh, the second C, which I'm coming to, being congruent. So, 
you know, congruence is a very important thing for me because in the body, mind, spirit uh, realm where I, I work, alignment is everything. Bringing, bringing alignment, bringing congruency into what you say, what you do, and how you are, what you be, body, mind, spirit. That congruence has to be brought in into how you project yourself. So it's very important to look at, and each one of you can do this now, all right? Get a pen and paper or just open a notepad in your computer and write down what is it that you are uh, most comfortable in uh, training about or in coaching about, right? There will be two, three, four points. I know there are a lot of other skills that you have, which you have acquired over so many years that you've been here, which you could also speak about, which you could also do. But unless we prune that list down to the top three, four, and then down, and I'll come to, and then what? Unless we prune it down to the top three, four, when we're not going to mean anything to anybody. We're going to try to mean something to everybody. And if you're trying to mean something to everybody, we really mean nothing to everybody because we don't have a niche. We don't have a place which we can be known for. So my place, like I'll lean on the story that I just told you, my place is renewal. I was an energy master. My place was uh, in, in that, but that wasn't something where I could speak about. It was something that people could do. It is good for trainings. It is good for workshops. But when it comes to speaking, like I've just been quoted by Anjani about habits. Now, as a speaker, you've got to be quotable. So renewal is about habits. And how do you acquire those habits? And how do you get into alignment with uh, yourself and therefore make habits stick? And how do you make habits sustainable? And all of that is stuff that uh, renewal practices are about. So I can coach in renewal, I can train in renewal, I can speak on renewal, and I can uh, turn renewal around to various facets of that in peak performance, in sustainability. In fact, I spoke to uh, the, the uh, wedding planners uh, at uh, an international wedding planner conference on sustainability of weddings. Now, <laughs> now that's because... Uh, if we have to renew the planet, the weddings create so much of waste and there are so many ways in which we can create sustainable weddings. Uh, it's a different subject altogether, but the subject comes to me because that's the platform why I speak. So everything has to get congruent with that. And now to, to say that if you've written down those three, four points, the top ones that you have, what you have to search for is the common denominator which could be a little higher than all of this. So as introduced, I'm an inner power, energy and mindfulness coach. So I, I, I've been doing all that, right? Inner power work uh, with, with spiritual meditative practice and all that. Energy work with Reiki, Qigong and all that. Mindfulness work, belief clearing and all that. But that's, that's not the moniker I'm using anymore. It's the founder of renewalism. That's what brings these three because that's what builds something that you can do. You can change your habits. And as you do it, we use the tools of inner power, mindfulness, energy, awareness, and all of that. So similarly, what, what is going to be above and uh, common to your top three, top four? I mean, just prune it down to two, three, four. That's the max. And then build it into one that becomes what we call a Monica, what you really stand for. And once you have that, then you start the basis of the next C that you have got to be consistent. So whatever you do, whatever mediums you use, whatever uh, uh, talking you do, you have to bring consistency of the congruence. So it's not that just because, uh, let's say, let's say I, I do a lot of uh, work with uh, aspiring speakers, for example, uh, in the PSAI as well. 
uh, I help people build their presentations. I help people use technology. Uh, for instance, you see my name over here, I can run my hand behind it. So uh, how do you do that? Well, I, I can teach you. I can coach you. But that's not what I'm consistently promoting. What I'm consistent about is renewalism, is about inner power, is about those things, right? So the, the, the congruence that you arrive at is what you have to be consistent about. You could be great with MS-DOS. You could be great with uh, uh, helping people uh, make resumes. You could be great with uh, gardening. But is that what's congruence that you arrived at? No. Be consistent with that. And I, I, I'm not, you know, you see my LinkedIn profile, I'm all over the place. In fact, yesterday's post was uh, about today's meeting, which has got nothing to do with uh, renewalism. But uh, I love to post, I love to boast. <laughs> but uh, I'm just telling you that because I haven't been uh, uh, consistent with my, with my post of yesterday, but it just gives me a lot of happiness to be contributing to the community, to be doing this on a special day like this today. But the attempt is to be. So I, I, sitting in a master class, have to tell you what's the right thing to do. Be consistent. Right? Now, when it comes to being consistent, a lot of these gurus that uh, charge a lot of money for uh, uh, doing things on LinkedIn and stuff like that, they talk about having a schedule three months in advance. And in fact, one of them uh, who I was considering uh, to... to coach me, uh, had, had, a, had a module where, uh, you know, he would, he, he, he would set up on a weekly basis, uh, on a week, a full week basis, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way to Friday, a post in advance, which is about your core topic so that your core congruent topic is consistent, consistently put forward to uh, people. And so you've prepared this uh, and it just shuffles over. And then every, every Wednesday, he was proposing that you do an interactive. So you use the funnel and stuff that you guys obviously know about. You, you're in this business for long enough and there's enough gurus online talking to you about this. But it, the reason I didn't fall for that or didn't join him or didn't go forward with that is because I felt that there's a certain amount of spontaneity and um, relevance to what we are doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, like today is Professional Speaker Celebration Day. So making those posts is not something that I can post a week in advance or uh, have scheduled for months in advance. And that spontaneity brings a lot of interest and currentness in what you, what you post about. So uh, there are these two schools of thought. The, the other school of thought also about spontaneity and currentness comes from another guru. But uh, you, you, as you explore these things, it will come across uh, these dilemmas about how can I be consistent uh, despite uh, wanting to be current, right? And uh, what's important is to be consistent. Uh, maybe currentness is not so important uh, if, if you want business arising out of it. I, I can also tell you quite honestly, that uh, my posts don't generate a lot of business for me, <laughs> but uh, they do position me as uh, somebody who can be spoken uh, to in, in, my, in my field, in the field of renewal, in the field of stress reduction and stuff like that. So um, I'm just looking at the chat box. Uh, thanks so much for your participation. It's really, really lovely. Awesome. So that's, that's the second C there in the second question. And I have a third C. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm going to give you four here. Be contactable. Okay. So uh, uh, th there, is a, there is this other thing that all the gurus talk about, the call to action. And sure, you have to have a call to action. But when it comes to anybody who's interested in what you're doing, be it uh, an agency or a client directly, they've got to know instantly where to contact you. And so, uh, you know, sandeepnath.com, if you can own your name on a .com, that's, that's best. If you can't, if you can own your moniker on a .com, like I have renewalism.com, I didn't get renewal.com, but uh, then renewalism is the movement. 
that's that's important because uh, your your contact points have to be available. You have to be easily approachable. I find a lot of people who put people through loops, you know, like the sandeepna.com slash AMA. Uh, that, that's all you'll find. Then you've got to put your details in and then somebody will get back to you and then you have a Zoom invite and all that. But that's... Uh, you just make yourself look very busy uh, when you may not be. It's it's fastest to you know just get a WhatsApp. Somebody clicks on zanipna.com and clicks on the WhatsApp button and bingo, there you are. And uh, then you can always decide how much time uh, you want to uh, spend on uh, the person who's contacted or messaged you and uh, how to get back to them. So uh, what you have to do is be congruent be consistent, and be contactable. Over to you, Anjali. Thanks, Sandeep. Lots of nuggets here. I, I was noting down and I said, um, you know, the one thing that stood out for me was congruence. And I think we often don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. And, and I want to give you an example. Only yesterday in you know, our group, there was an interesting discussion on profile photography. And how we would, you know, sometimes the photographer is, and we are not in congruence with what we want to look like. So you look really pretty in the picture versus you look very pretty differently in, in, you know, in, in your real self. And there are two different pretty people out there. Um, and it kind of creates a gap. Um, so ha being congruent in the way you look, the way you do things, the way you speak, the way you deliver, I think is a very important take back. Also, what I love the way you do is, uh, which I think is a take back for me, and I don't know if uh, uh, some of you have noticed, is that consistently he brings about the word nihilism in everything he says. So it's consistent delivery of message of this is what I do for a living. Um, and also the, the email ID or, or the contact address comes back consistently. And that's also a, a pretty good way of, you know, reminding you that this is where you can contact me. I think that's a great tip. It's a hidden tip, but it's a tip that you're giving us in saying, do it as often as you can and do it as consistently as you can. So thank you for that. I want Thank to bring, you. <laughs> I want to bring, for making a point out of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a point, right? I mean, I, I, I don't do it. So I am sure I can relate to a lot of friends here who don't. And I'm pretty sure this is a take back. Um, so we've talked about the why, which is the clarity. We've talked about the what, which is the three C's. So we literally add four C's. Um, now, the, the interesting question is, there is so much out there. There are so many open forums out there. There is the TUSP, there is the PSAI, there is the TED, there is the this, there is the that, there is the whatnot. Where do we go? Where do we start from? How do we you know, like really what? So where do we profile ourselves? Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, now, Sureka has a hand raised. Do we want to take yeah. that now or do we say for q &A? Uh, so, so a quick one on your congruence, really. So mm -hmm. just like Anjali, Anjali said, we ran a poll today in our group and we asked them what uh, what would be the topic which you would want to speak on would it be that niche that one topic or would it be a couple of topics which you are com comfortable on most of us really answered uh, and the third one was whatever the you know speaker is asked to speak on but most okay. of us really talked about two or three topics which we are comfortable about and which is what you said over here but maybe there might not be, like you said, what is the common denominator? And maybe there isn't any, you know, I might speak on emotional intelligence at one level and maybe maybe Reiki at the other level. I don't know. So is, there, is it a must that there needs to be a common moniker across the three topics? But what I'm hearing you say is still be consistent about one single message and a niche. So how do you create a niche when there are three, four topics? Right. So that uh, actually brings us to a how aspect, which we'd uh, take out of uh, today's conversation. And I'd be very happy to assist uh, members of uh, Shivantran on the how. Uh, it's surprisingly simple to find a common denominator when you just put your mind to it. When you look at yourself, as an observer, and what am, what am I saying to people? And if you just talk about, for example, Reiki and emotional intelligence, the two that you uh, mentioned, and would you like to offer a third one, Sureka, that you may have written? 
or is it just two that you wrote okay maybe communication communication right. i'm just trying to figure out some distinct stuff yeah right right so uh you pretty much i am in fact a lot of us would relate with you totally <laughs> you know because uh, as i was saying as, as a professional presenter there are so many uh, tips and tricks about uh, the communication about getting your message across and uh, you 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 would love to just do that and reiki again is something that is is experiential is is not something that you can just speak about you would probably workshop it and uh, if you're a reiki master that is and uh, when it comes to emotional intelligence yes there is a need for stuff like that uh, but we don't know how to really package that so how can we look at just these three coming together and from the top of my hat and th this is this is not something that uh, I, i would uh, say as uh, as bona fide advice but we could be looking at something like uh, 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 um, an emotion um, whisperer, perhaps. So I am the emotions whisperer. now you got people interested in what does an emotion whisperer do this something intriguing about you which gives you three words that every buddy would love to hear tell me more the moment all of you for you of you now hear those words tell me more now you've got a captive audience who you can take through based on what you know about them into what you really do and what value you can really add to them but until you get that tell me more you just all over the place so if you're the emotional whisperer i'd like to know what exactly you do Sandeep, you have why we're here. two emotional whisperers. Suddenly, I have a feeling. <laughs> you gave us a you gave us a golden nugget. <laughs> I, I told you a lot of you are the same. I mean, I thanks Sureka for asking that because we, we're pretty much at the same boat. Yeah, <laughs> there you are, Anjani. Go on. <clears throat> so, so when you were having that moment of thought, when you were actually doing that, your mind. um and you know all this communication reiki uh, all those thoughts were and and jump juggled and you came up with this did you use a methodology or was it just the creative side of you that popped up it was just the creative side of me that popped up it was just my energetic connection with what i was to say to you right so energetic connection the who stuff about what people don't understand yeah all right interesting so you know preeta is asking i would i obviously want to discover a few more with the common denominator Pita, do you want to quickly put out three? No, 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 no. Not doing this now. <laughs> Not doing this. Now. Okay. All right. I thought we the take one. For, for, like I said, you know, uh, this is not bona fide advice. It's just what comes out of the top of my head right oh, now. Okay. But All right. it could be, it could be, it could be something that uh, two or uh, ten of you could use, and I'd be happy if you do. But let's let's really connect on a one-to-one -one session for that. Okay, I got get it. All right. So, Pita, there you go. You have Sandeep to connect with on a one-to-one. um so <laughs> i'm coming back to my question then where do we profile ourselves the the uh, medias the mediums right so where we go i would say that uh, you you've got to have four key things sorted out and i'll give you a abbreviation for that so you can remember it is oils and it's not o i l s i'm just reading the chat box again now huh? it's o y l s all right so what's o y l s o is a one pager any client or agency 
that you're writing to, you talked about TOSB or whatever, you know, they have to, in one page, which could be back to back, so two sides, they have to be able to understand the all the stuff that we've talked about for the last uh, 45 minutes. They have to understand why you do what you do, what you do, and uh, what you can deliver for them. So in the process of making a one pager, you would get a lot of clarity about how to position yourself. You know, and that is, that is uh, the key thing to uh, profile yourself with. And having done that, what you want to do is get onto YouTube, which is the oily, the Y part of oily. Not oily, oils, right. Uh, YouTube is critical. And building your congruence and consistency is what YouTube is good for. Because unlike every other social medium, YouTube is infinitely searchable for infinitely long. You actually create assets that stay, that don't go in the flow of um, the, the, the wall, the, the screen, the whatever it is, right? They, 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 they just don't disappear after two days or even after two minutes for many, right? They always stay. And then you've got to learn how to use YouTube to uh, be more searchable, how to use keywords there and all of that, which are the how aspects. There's so many how aspects. That's why I, I cut uh, Preeta short. Uh, we can't be going into the hows of everything here. But I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, using YouTube is a very important where you got to be. And uh, obviously, your messages on YouTube have to be consistent with uh, your one pager. Now, don't worry if you have been on YouTube and you've got exactly 46 uh, followers so far. Doesn't matter. Don't worry if you've been on YouTube and you've already put 300 videos of all sorts of random stuff, which uh, is about uh, everything under the sun. Starting now, <laughs> you can be congruent and consistent and keyword it correctly. So that what becomes searchable under your name is the consistent stuff. It doesn't matter what those 300 videos were in the past. And it doesn't matter that you have 46 audiences because you're going to develop the right audience starting now. And that's what's going to help. The third thing about where you have to be, and I say this because you're trainers, coaches, and uh, you, you, you're looking at speaking to corporate audiences, you see, what happened between 2016 and 2020 for me was I was in open forums. I was in public workshops. I was in uh, business to consumer, B2C audiences. And B2C audiences are great to work with. You, you, it's so satisfying. You know, you just bond with people and you just, just get to know people and work with people. And uh, uh, they, 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 they know you, you know them. But you can't do anything homogeneously. People are disparate. They're all over the place, right? Especially in my case, they, they could be anywhere in the world. And uh, when, when I got this umbrella of renewal here, it was important for me to have a B2B audience, business to business, corporates. And that's when, only last year, I started getting more... Uh, mm, Serious, or shall I say, <laughs> I just read that, Preeta. Right. Uh, uh, not, not, not really serious. Maybe the word I'm looking for is scientific about how to use LinkedIn. And that's the L. Using LinkedIn is key in reaching the corporate audience. And why you need that audience is because then you are able to work with them in groups. And it is, it is a longer cycle, a much longer cycle to start delivering something uh, to a business. Uh, but it's steadier and it's chunkier. And in my case, it helps me prove that when you engage with renewal habits, for instance, the uh, productivity and engagement goes up 
in a measurable, say, 56%. And sickness and absenteeism comes down by 73%. And so uh, there, is, there is value for uh, the businesses that um, engage with this. And so we start with a talk, move into a workshop, and uh, if both are paid for and with, with a larger outreach, right? So um, LinkedIn is very important. You know, I don't know your business, but for, for me, I, I would prioritize that for most of us because we are not, unless we are, we're not with Gen Z really as our audience. If you are, then probably Instagram is your medium. If you're somewhere in between, Facebook could be your medium. If you're into, uh, you know, cooking and uh, recipes and stuff like that, Facebook could be your medium. But do not have multiple mediums. So let's just uh, uh, see which is the right medium for you, but take one social media. And it could either be uh, LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or uh, whatever really works for your audience, right? But I, I'm, like I said, guessing that most of us would benefit a lot from LinkedIn. So maybe the OYLS could be OYL, OYXS. YouTube is non-negotiable. It's an asset for life. But uh, depending on your audience, choose one social. Do not be all over the place. It's meaningless. I am in Facebook. I am in Twitter. In fact, whatever I post to LinkedIn automatically connects with my Twitter. But I'm not building a Twitter following. I'm scientifically building a LinkedIn uh, community, which is a community of uh, basically CXOs and uh, HR people. And so I had about 4,000 connections over there, which I pruned down to 2,000 intentionally last year because LinkedIn has an algorithm. And again, we're getting to a how, uh, where for the first 3,000 uh, people that you have, it looks at the kind of profiles they have, tries to find a common denominator and then uh, sort of classifies you there. And I was getting classified with, with lesser number of founders and directors and chief executives that, uh, than I would like to. So I had to prune down that and then rebuild that. And I'm at about 3,000 something now. But now that uh, that process has started and going beyond 3,000 all the way to uh, building a greater connection uh, base there, it would be connecting with uh, the right audiences for me. And that's something I learned last year. So learn about the social media you're in. Don't just randomly post out there. Learn what's going to fetch more for your post, right? And then the TOSBs of the world will contact you. Um, and the S is your site, right? My site. You, you've got to have a site because that's what people will uh, come to. Uh, they, they will look you up in social media a lot, but eventually they will also come to your site because that's where you say your perspective of things. And uh, see how you, you can, you can uh, bring that congruence on that site also. I haven't done it. Uh, I thought I had done it until I put it to test with the... Uh, uh, an agency which is into, you know, a third party, uh, which advised me that the way that I had done it, I had looked at sandeepna.com as the routing site for sandeeptalks.com, which is a site specifically for speaking. So if uh, a speaker bureau or an event planner has to be given a site address, it would be sandeeptalks.com. But uh, sandeepna.com would route there. It would also route to inner power with sandeep.com which is where I have my inner power products, which is the product side. But uh, the, the feedback I got just last month from this agency, and so I'm going to be redesigning this now in the uh, next few weeks, is that this routing is giving a feeling that you are multiple people. So do not route directly there. Have pages for each one of them. So I was just plain lazy, all right? I was just plain lazy that I didn't have a speaking page and an inner power page which people will go to. And then if they want further details, I go to the site. But sandeeptalks.com is working very well because it is very focused. So if an event planner is going to talk to me, they just go to sandeeptalks.com because that's the address I give them. Or that's the address that they get from the speaking link at sandeepna.com and they don't see any more than that. 
but to somebody who is seeing andeepnath.com in its totality he is seeing uh, a lot of confusion i am told uh, I, i didn't know that you know it's it's always good to have a coach it's always good to have somebody who can see what you can't see like you all can see what my finger is pointing to but i can't see where it's pointing right so it's very very important to have a coach or uh, somebody who can evaluate you and somebody who can guide you on how to do what to do and how you're doing right now and uh, it's very very well worth it and speaking of things that are worth it that's uh, probably also related to the question anjani about where you got to be spending money and where you spend your money in creating these assets uh, video assets for example which are important for youtube so i position myself as uh, uh, somebody in stress in fact i you know i made this uh, my my own show reel i got it made by uh, a company called speak internationally which is based in us and uh, uh, they made it in 2020 that was the the lockdown time and uh, they just took a lot of footage and put it together and at that time my key thing i was transitioning because renewal i just written the book i i didn't have the idea the movement and all but uh, the key thing for me that time was stress so so reka again if you look at another perspective all this jazz about inner power energy mindfulness and all where i thought the denominator went to was stress so i'm very congruent on stress also but then stress again is abated through renewal habits which is what i say today but my my show reel is on stress and uh, so so why, some, why I'm, I'm that's sorry. where i so sorry? Stop, sorry to step in uh, yeah. um, i think what what you've said in in the whole showcase or or in the in the last part where and you identified how you've done it and how the house and the you know what are the, what each one of them has housed you also said very categorically have uh, one social media you focus on and you're insistent that youtube is that social media to be which is no. great not insistent so, so you know the word is social media yeah sorry l is the social media which could oh, be x okay, okay. all right youtube okay. is not negotiable okay youtube is not negotiable the linkedin or instagram is is what you should choose and from what we know a little bit uh, so all of these are connected somehow you post in one place the other kind of keep getting spruced up by their own but you focus your content for that one place so that i think yeah and, and you know what we've spoken about this a lot in the in the past uh, as a shri mantran group we've you know we've got some amazing advisors within the team who actually you know have told us how to use it and maybe you know we we've rolled out programs within to say how to use it how to maximize it and you know we continue to do that so that's i think taking back the fact that where uh, one pager and youtube are non negotiable linkedin stroke instagram stroke whichever other medium you'd like to use site builds your credibility so those are the four areas to look at how fast how quick how often can i do that i don't know i got to pick one up and start working with it and build on the rest right so that's that's where we are but i in in the spirit of time i wanted to actually sorry i butted it in when you were talking but i really wanted to ask one small favor <clears throat> could you help us actually design a one pager because i think that is going to be uh you know amazing for a lot of us how do you design a line? and i got mind design from a marketing person so i don't mm-hmm. have know how it's done you know um 350 pages 500 oh, sorry 350 words 500 words two sided picture no picture credentials paragraphs um numbers i don't know how to do all of this so it would really help to give us some interesting tips all right so uh yeah let's do that uh, let me just see if i can uh, share my do i have share screen sharing because i could share mine yes you're a host so you will okay <laughs> just a moment let me let me just see if i can pick this out or, or uh, let, let's um, do this i have my one page or online so it's i was just looking to my drive for it but it was searching for that fact, very often the one pager could be of you know three four different uh, maybe about 150 words to <clears throat> 400 words depending on how you know long or short you want to be but when you're giving a speaker profile what's the ideal um, you know length of the 
reply. Great question. Yeah. So um, what what I'm attempting to do while uh, I get my thoughts together about sharing this is uh, share the link with you. So each one of you can also open this, or I could also share the screen, of course. But I'll share the link anyway. Uh, So that it stays with you for reference. It's it's a good one. Why? Because uh, it's uh, served me, and uh, it's time to uh, to refresh it. I'm sure. Like I was saying about my site, it's time to relook at these things every every year. Probably one should start relooking. Ah, okay, fine. Thanks so much. I was going to do the same thing myself. Uh, l allow me to do this. So. this one yeah so it gives me the flexibility to navigate it so <clears throat> elements of a one pager let's, uh, you have the link you can go up and down it but let's quickly get focused on uh, uh, the screen and then you can yourself there are, there are two things that are happening right on top one is there is a band happening which when you send out a pd even on whatsapp is what people can see right on top. So virtual speaker profile, this was made. I think he dropped off. Should be back. Okay. Am I back? Yes, 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 you are. Yes. Okay, sorry. Can I share the screen, Sandeep? Would that make it easier so that uh, internet bandwidth? Uh, the reason I'm doing it is because then I can go up and down the screen more easily. But uh, all right, uh, maybe maybe that's what ticked this thing off. Yeah, I'm the internet bandwidth. It. Here you go. Let me know when to scroll. When to scroll, and I will. All right. So what you see on top is what appears in a PDF, right? So you want to uh, make sure that your uh, either your moniker is there, uh, which may or may not make sense. Like the emotional whisperer may make sense or may not, but. Uh, I just wanted to position this as a speaker profile and uh, it's as the keyword there is virtual, you know, because uh, uh, th that time when COVID hit, it was, it was a serious problem for uh, existing speakers to speak virtually. And that kind of leveled out the playing field. And that was kind of good because uh, people who are very good talking on stages were completely miserable speaking to a camera. And so getting to speak to a camera was something that anybody had to learn to do. And uh, the faster you learn to do that and develop uh, tech around it, uh, the, the get interesting online uh, was uh, what took you further and faster. And then uh, if we go down, you'll see that there is text about what's relevant to speaking. And my numbers and my bullet points about what I was speaking, like I was saying, in, in those days when I designed my site in the one pager, my focus was on stress. And uh, now it's time to redesign with more focus and renewal. But bringing that out was important with credibility about the books you have, the photos you have. So that's the stuff that you want to put together. And if you don't have it, then what you can lean on are stuff that we can discuss on a case to case basis. And then what the event planners or clients want to know is what do you have off the table? What can they take away from you immediately? So you, they can take away stuff on improving work-life balance, maximizing productivity, team relationships, and stuff like that. And or also page two. They have five canned talks that they can take right on top. Nine Zen secrets of, uh, you know, you can read that yourself. So the number one way to push uh, uh, performance without burnout. So stuff like that. And th th these are named talks that can immediately be used by event planners to sort of plug in uh, a slot that they're looking for a speaker on. So that's very important. Then you have some statements of credibility, testimonial type of things. And why YouTube is important is here. So in a PDF, you can actually click on these things and you go to those YouTube videos, you go to the show reel on reverses your stress, you go to audience responses. 
and uh, that's uh, essentially the one pager. The last part of it, if you go right down, is again something to do with credibility, uh, which is the, the sign of line I have that I've been doing this online since 2016, which was very meaningful in 2020 because not many people had been doing stuff online for four years till then. And um, uh, the, the first thing about building a one page profile is putting together your materials, putting together videos and uh, photographs and your pitch, your, um, uh, your clarity, right? Your why. And the next thing to do is get hold of a designer like uh, Anjani did <laughs> and get them to make it uh, visually attractive. I would uh, repeat that it's very important to have the top part very, very clear and uh, inviting because uh, you know that's, that's what shows uh, on uh, the email header on the top, wherever it's an attachment, you just see the top part. So these are the elements of a one pager. Uh, which are basically to establish your credibility, give quick links to your work and have easy contactability, right? So that's uh, kind of uh, a way to do it. And uh, I mean, we, I'd be happy to have uh, suggestions on this uh, because you guys, some of you may have, like you said, you've been having workshops in the past and may have made some progress with these things. Uh, may have already put together things which you're wondering whether they work, don't work, why they would work. And uh, we, we could discuss that for a few minutes, if you'd like. So, so Sandeep, I have an interesting question. On the top, that banner, which is like the real estate of, uh, the real real estate of, uh, of any one pager, it's also the real real estate on LinkedIn, that banner behind our picture, right, on LinkedIn. Um, what kind of what was the reason for you to pick a picture that actually is, you know, your side profile? It's not even your front profile. You picked a side profile. I often get told, look into the camera profile is more important than looking away from the camera. But you've picked a side profile picture. What was the thought? Great. And now that you ask me that question, uh, let me tell you that for a speaker, the most important thing is the audience. So it doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter what you can share. It doesn't matter who you are. What matters is only what you can get across. The reason today I'm using seas and oils and stuff like that is hoping that it would get across something that you can remember more easily, right? And for me, what's important in the banner is not me, it's my audience who I have got across to, which is why they are having those uh, points of interaction with me. And that's what reinforces my credibility. Uh, like you said, I use the same picture on LinkedIn and on LinkedIn, you have the round thing with the front profile anyway. So uh, <laughs> they, they know who I am when they see me, but uh, bringing my audience to the front is more important to me as a speaker and to my uh, clients and associates, uh, event planners, speaker bureaus, and uh, all, all of them, because I care for their audiences. Hmm. Another question that's coming to my mind, Sandeep, is uh, so far you've used multiple tools. Um, you know, you've used one pages, you've used LinkedIn, YouTube, in whatever format and how much ever. What has been the most, uh, the one that has been most seeked out for you? Where do you get the most um, outreach for? So since I have been focusing primarily on LinkedIn, that is what's working for me. Between 2020 and 2022, I uh, experimented with Instagram, Facebook, and all of that. Uh, LinkedIn was giving me more traction in 2021 as well. And so that's why in 22, I became more uh, focused on it. Uh, and that's why I advised on that. Um, but it could be different. It really depends on where your audience stays, right? 
But if you're looking at speaker bureaus, if you're looking at uh, direct clients, then uh, uh, LinkedIn is what's going to connect with them. Right. So thanks for that tip. There's a question. There are actually two questions. Uh, I'm going to ask the first one from Ruchi Fool. Uh, Ruchi, cl clarify the question a little bit, please. Who is the best to take mid-session photos? Are you asking for a reference or are you saying a gadget? What's your question, really? Just unmute and ask, please. Yeah, it's really about who really is the best to take mid-session photos. For example, when I go to deliver a talk at a corporate session and stuff, you know, I can't ask somebody over there uh, to click my photo. Uh, you know, at least I'm hesitant. And I can't carry my professional photographer there with me. So who's going to yeah. take the pictures? And I saw you have beautiful pictures with of uh, mid-session, you know, are taken mid-session for yourself. So I, I request the event planner to do it. All right. Who is the, whoever is the organizer. All right. And I uh, tell them that that would be a request from my side while they're engaging itself. Right. So do you carry a professional camera with you or are these taken through no, no, your all phone, phone, phone photos, camera? All phone Absolutely phone photos. Lovely. You have a good phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you for that. Um, another question out here is uh, from Koshi. Please, could you highlight what, according to you, are a few key differences in the way you presented virtually and when versus when one is on stage? Great question there. <laughs> so, a masterclass in itself, actually, that question, uh, Koshi. Uh, when you present virtually, the greatest challenge is uh, getting the audience to stick with you. Uh, you know, you, you have the cameras off most of the time. And uh, so you don't really know whether they're paying attention or not. But you've got to use three things which come straight from NLP. Uh, you've got to use them a lot more powerfully, uh, a lot more. Um, not just powerfully, but a lot more deliberately, uh, which is the visual, the audio, and the kinesthetic, right? So if you've noticed through my talk, I have often been using my fingers for things that uh, you, you would want to see to get the complete message, right? The C itself. And uh, you could use props. If you if you use tech, then you could use backgrounds and you could use yourself within your slides and stuff like that, which makes it extremely interesting. And then people stick there. Audio, you've got to use your voice uh, more deliberately than you do on stage. Yes, you, you're, the way you move on stage is very important, but here you're boxed, you're in this frame. But your voice is not in the frame. So your highs and lows of voice, and even visually, you're coming closer to camera, moving away from it, and stuff like that, would help your audience get the message and stay with you with a little more certainty, uh, with a little a higher level of interest, perhaps, than they would otherwise. And uh, the, the, the kinesthetics of this is, you know, the touchy-feely aspects about how you build your uh, your content and uh, how they sort of you emotionally connect with them because you don't have a feedback on stage you have immense feedback you perceive energy you can even perceive energy uh, online but it's not as easy because if I'm looking at the camera I'm not necessarily looking at you and uh, that that's that's a catch because often you would want to look at your audience and now I'm looking at the audience but you feel I'm not looking at you and you get disconnected from me, even though I'm so much more connected to you. You know, I know exactly what you guys are doing and um, how many of you are online, but you seeing my eyes and uh, here I am reading the chat box and you feel I'm disconnected. But if I look at the camera, completely connected, right? So that's the kinesthetic aspect of it. And uh, that's a trade-off, but 
since since you don't get that feedback uh, virtually which you get on stage uh, you got to make that trade off so that's what part of the master class <laughs> Yeah, we're going to we're thank, going to take a lot. Thank of you so much. Stuff. Thank you so much for that. And I think uh, the keyword deliberately meant so much. So that was very helpful, Sandeep. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I I think use of props, tonality, look at the camera instead of the people were I think very interesting. You know, small tips which we often don't give much credit to. And I have this thing about um, a selfie, right? If you look at the selfie and you look at yourself, you're almost looking like you're looking in a different direction. But if you look at the camera, you're almost looking like you're looking at yourself. Have you ever tried that? Because it's a mirror image. Um, so when you take a selfie and you don't look, if you look at yourself, it doesn't look like it's a big, proper picture. But if you look at the camera, so that's where I learned it uh, sometime back that, oh my God, there is such a big difference between the uh, between looking at yourself and looking at the audience. Sandeep, there are a couple of more questions before, you know, uh, as we are getting closer to the end time, I want to ask these questions as well. Sunita is asking, are there any specific tools that one should or can learn to enhance one's presentations, both online and offline, and the best platform or brand to learn from? Uh, Sunita, what would you mean by platform or brand? Could you unmute and clarify? Yes, there are specific tools uh, to enhance one's presentation, both online and offline. But uh, yeah, so more uh, more online. But you know, like uh, so, if you're talking about apps that you could use or uh, platforms in that sense, uh, one of them that you want to learn about is OBS, which is uh, what I often use, which helps you create uh, everything on the one screen. So right now I'm using OBS and uh, of course I haven't set it up for that, but I just put my logo up here. But you know, uh, if, if I, for example, uh, uh, I haven't set it up, but let me, let me just, um, what you need is a green screen. Uh, now, I don't have a green screen here uh, in this workshop area that I'm doing uh, this talk out of. So you're not able to see me uh, put up a whiteboard, but I just, put up a whiteboard over here, which would have appeared here, which is kind of appearing if uh, if I had a green screen, it would be very, very clear over there. And uh, stuff like that. You could put up a film, you could put up a PowerPoint. Like I said, you could be speaking inside it. Uh, I don't know what this is, uh, but... Um, so uh, basically, can, you, can you hear me? Sorry? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So um, basically, that's exactly what I meant. I mean, uh, I do draw a blank when I think of, uh, like you said, just you just mentioned, there's a green screen, there's a white screen. So right now, obviously, I've never used any of that stuff. And uh, one would draw a blank, uh, you know, if even if I think of learning something like that, but I don't know from where, who would be the best person to teach me is what I meant when I said, which agency or which which platform to learn it from? What's the best way to move forward there? Can right. I take that one, please, Sandeep? Yeah, Nandini. All right. You have a lot of she mantras here, Sunita. Just reach out. Just ask that question and watch the support that just comes through. So just go for it. Um, there's a lot out there. There's some wonderful people who can do this. We've been talking about it even in the group of maybe doing a class on Canva, class on uh, Zoom, class on, you know, how, how are these tools used? So right. just ask See, the question. Canva and Zoom are very basic. What I meant was something which is more evolved, uh, which would really, uh, you know, put the X factor in place when, whenever presentation was concerned. Sandeep, you want to answer that X factor question? No, I, I'm, I'm going to throw it back to you, Anjani, because uh, Shimantran's the the organization the go to organization to get any of these resources on board and uh, learn from it doesn't take more than an hour and a half to learn OBS project for example that's and, right uh, uh, you can do that <laughs> right um, so Sunita actually there are still people out there who can support and help uh, I'm sure if we ask actively we, someone will raise their hand and come forward uh, or recommend you something somebody who can right we'll do that yeah thanks so much.
Thanks, Sandeep, uh, for answering the question. Or the team organize uh, the expert to do a masterclass on the subject. Yeah, great idea. Um, then I have a question from Anju Kish. I do a lot of talks with audience of 50 to 500. The talks are very powerful and impactful. Um, and also work as marketing tool for me. But what I struggle with is the is marketing my other services during the talk. I find myself hesitating and stumbling. How does one do that seamlessly without appearing to be marketing? Just go back and watch the recording in the beginning. Sandeep has done it beautifully. Sandeep, your, yours. <laughs> well, thanks for that. Uh, well, you know, it's a mindset thing. And... Uh, the coaches, trainers that you are, you understand that as well as uh, anybody, I mean, much more than anybody else. The mindset about your offering is about the value that people stand to get out of what they do when they interact with you and when they pay money to you. Now, what uh, Anjani referred to was sandeepna.com slash AMA, for example, which is uh, a free half an hour talk that you have with me because I know that you will derive value if you book that talk. And you know, and I know too, that if you derive value from there, you would be more than willing to, for instance, pay for a session of uh, one and a half hours to learn OBS one-on-one, -on -one, for example. And when you know that what you're doing is of value to the other, it would be more natural for you to integrate it without appearing salesy. It's salesy only because for some reason you think it's something that you are pushing across to earn money out of. But when you talk about value exchange, you, you're giving tremendous value. My, my hour as a speaker is worth $3,000. I would give you an hour for 3,000 rupees. It's great value exchange for both of us. And um, this is another question that came up, kind of related. But when, when uh, I was thinking about budgeting for the assets that we have to build, the videos and stuff like that, like I was talking about, so um, one of the answers that I got from one of the uh, professional speakers at that time, who is, is uh, you know, ha had gone down the road a lot further than me, was what I'm sharing with you. How much do you want to earn per hour of speaking? That is the investment that you should be willing to make. And so in order to engage Speak Internationally for the site and the video and all that, I did spend, uh, what, what's four lakhs? That, that much. And that's what I'm working towards. I think $3,000 is still uh, not there, but uh, that that's that's the goal. So you you've got to have that vision in putting the money on the table, because that's the money that you deserve. You've got to believe that you deserve it. And then it'll come to you. So why did I digress? Uh, what, what was the question? How to incorporate. How, how to incorporate, how to not seem salesy. Mm. Because you know, you, you're you not selling when you know that you deserve it. And when you know that you're giving commensurate value. So make sure that uh, you you got that clear in your head and yeah. it'll come very naturally. Thank you, Sandeep, for that. But sometimes what happens, what you're doing is a paid talk. You're in a school or in a corporate and you're just there for that talk. You cannot market your other products or other services. Right. But how do you smartly put it in without, um, you know, appearing to be talking about your other products because you have a captive audience there who's, who's seen right. you talk and, yeah. Oh, well, then again, like Anjani said, you know, when when you when you've got your first C, uh, the clarity, and then the second C, the congruence in place, uh, like renewal comes out in anything that I say, and uh, renewal concerns uh, all of us, and we can do something about it. 
um, or we can't because <laughs> this is not the forum to talk about renewal. And I openly say that to you, this is not. But maybe some of you will go over to renewalism.com. Maybe some of you will engage. I don't know. I'll come to you, Surekha, in a minute. I want to take one last question from the audience. Yes, uh, so, Anjali, I had a, the answer to, may ah. not be the answer, relevant to what Anju is saying. Yeah. So, Anju, um, just to kind of be clear, uh, you know, your audience are students, possibly, and I don't completely know, but yes, your audience are students. So, the question is whether, if that is the audience, are they the target buyers? And you should so be very clear. My audience are the parents. Are the parents. So if the parents are listening and then you can continue marketing to them, maybe it makes sense. But if it is the organizer who is actually buying your services, they are the ones who are your target marketing group. So you need to figure out where you want to insert those marketing hooks. So I just I thought it was the kids. But anyways, yeah. I also want to add to what Surekha and Anju just discussed, you know, and, and take you back for a minute to the first uh, 35 minutes of the conversation when Sandeep started, very subtly, um, he talked about his journey. Now, if you're talking about your journey, Anju, and you're saying, you know, how Untaboo started, um, there are many spots and I'm saying like, I'm a guru, I'm not, I just learned it from Sandeep. So I'm just bringing it out here because I just learned it from him. Um, so he he's in his journey, he would have probably said renewalism about six or seven times. And he would have said Sandeep now dot com AMA about three to four times. Now that stuck with me uh, because he, he in the first 30 seconds when I had the most attention span, right? In the next 30 seconds, my attention span goes down. It's the rule of one thirds. The attention span was most in the first 30 seconds. He pinned it, pinned it, pinned it, pinned it. So now I see a dartboard mark there. And, and that's what happened to me. And I'm just talking of a personal experience here. So I guess my take back from it would be the next time I'm having a conversation, I make sure I say Bento Coach, Bento Coach, Bento Coach at least five times in the first 30 minutes. Somehow. At Bento Coach, we do this. Whatever. I'm being dramatic here. Apologies. Uh, you just marketed yourself, Anjali. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> All right. So one last question. 7.28. I want to close at 7.30. Um, last question coming up. Tell us how to work with speaker bureaus. This is a great question. Which ones are good? Which ones? What's the process of getting active? Well, uh, handled. Two things here. Yeah, I, I saw the question. Thanks so much for your participation, guys. It's it's very very meaningful to me. Thank you so much for the chat box moving that way. It's it's amazing. And uh, there are two points that come to my mind about this. One is that speaker bureaus will not get your assignments. All right. They will. Uh, the 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 catch here is that they work on a fee. And unless you are eminently marketable, their percentage of the fee is not worth uh, their investing time in. So right off the bat, if you are looking at a speaker bureau marketing you or uh, thinking that it's um, gonna make money because uh, of you, that's not gonna happen. They, they looking at celebrities and the, the problem, the catch here is that uh, when you are a celebrity, you don't need a bureau. And when you're not a celebrity, you need a bureau and celebrities work with uh, bureaus and bureaus work with celebrities. Uh, having said that, I was not a celebrity. I am not a celebrity. But I still get a few assignments through bureaus because I did the first two C's and then the third C in that order correctly. I was clear on what I'm offering. I was clear that nobody else is offering what I'm offering the way I've positioned it. Uh, a lot of people will be talking about habits, but renewal habits, in a power. I was congruent with that. And then when they see me consistent in LinkedIn, they just write in that, you know, that there's XYZ organization which needs to talk with you for this, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to be easier for you to get direct clients or... Um, own your skills in open workshops and uh, allow the speaker bureaus to see your clarity, congruence, and consistency, and then contact you. They, 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 it doesn't really work the other way. You, of course, have to uh, contact them to uh, get them to know that you exist. And uh, if they like your one pager, for example, then you've got a conversation moving. But uh, you have to have your assets in place first. So spend on your assets.
that's the long and short of it so interestingly um, amazing take back the speaker bureaus will not contact you unless you're contactable uh, and you're one of your c's is contactable so how do you make yourself contactable by being more visible how do you make yourself more visible going back to the oils how do you do that having clarity it's all kind of drawn into a circle um thank you very much for that sandeep as we are coming to the end of this session today i have nothing but gratitude to really say let us know if there's an offer that you have for the she mantras uh, and also please do share your contact at the bottom here you know sandeep.nath forward slash ama that would be great as a link there uh, but ama the ama is missing slash ama all right okay all right and uh, also you know do i i'm i'm sure you will offer a generous offer to the she mantras if they connect with you and just uh, give us a she mantra code <laughs> so we can put it out there for everyone who wants to connect with you and have you know have a longer conversation or an engagement to know what else to do uh, for renewalism and as a speaker right so if you click on the link here and here's a side tip which some of you may not know uh, i don't know why people don't yet know but uh, i find a lot of zoom calls where people really uh, just put the websites uh, in the chat box hoping people will click they can't click unless you put https colon slash slash that's when you make things clickable so now you can click directly so whenever you share a link in zoom put https or http whatever you have slash uh, colon slash slash when you click on that it's going to offer you a half an hour one to one in which for you as a shi mantra because you're going to tell me when you book it you've got a little message box over there tell me you and uh, we met at shi mantra you're not going to get half an hour you're going to get all the time it takes to answer one how all right that's fantastic you can decide which how you want that's fantastic sandeep that is so generous that is so generous so reach out to sandeep to ask that one how as have your how clear out there and go and just connect with him the link <laughs> did not come right to there. some people apparently just... so the link is right up here right what else do we have i think we're done people are signing off thank you so much sandeep for for coming and spending 90 generous minutes giving us this most amazing um nugget for how to profile yourself i need to go back and fix my one pager it looks very drab with just a lot of words and no pictures um so yeah thank you very much <laughs> i will put the link in the she coaches group yes i will as soon as we sign off from here and i'd like to thank you anjani roshni and uh, the core team and all of you for coming because you have made my professional speaker celebration day a real celebration and uh, i have a post on linkedin yesterday about it so please connect with me on linkedin which is sandeepnath.com/linkedin and uh, comment on the post as well thanks Thank you so much, Sandeep. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone from Shri Mantra, to join for joining us. It was a fantastic conversation. <laughs> so, Rekha, you can stop the recording, please.